we're going from 25 delivery a week to 250 delivery a week during the peak of COVID. Well, sorry. Welcome, Tarn. Uh, the lady <laughs> that brings and sells more than 20,000 dumplings every single month. And you are running this business and starting it during COVID. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. So, so thank you. Thank you so much for, for hopping on and sharing your story. Um, tell us a little bit more about your background, because I know that you have been in the industry for a long time. Yeah, I, I work at um, a Thai restaurant in Victoria Falls. Here, I got, you know, dishwasher, prep cook, and I, I served there. Like, and that's 16 years, and I eventually left and become a GM at this one restaurant for six months. And after that, I was a manager at a full Asian street food for um, about a year and a half. And, she, and, and then I started my own. My is, own. It, is, is it typical that like the trajectory of people who are in the service industry, hospitality, they always have a dream about, hey, you know what? I can do this myself and I can do a better job. Is that your mentality? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, man, I'm making this people millionaire. Like, why can't I do it? Oh, you know, and... I just know that I can do a way better job than most of the owner. Like I care more. I care more about the staff. I care more about the kitchen. I would do a better job at this than than people that just have money that that investing. I I know for a fact that something that I really applaud you, Tarn, about uh, is your ability to create not just great food, but really mm -hmm. about the culture and the community that you're able to build because that is basically your your secret sauce. That's your magic. Yeah, I, I think we have seriously the best customer and I would go up against anyone in Victoria Town. Like we have the most royal customer. Um, they're super supportive. Um, yeah, they've been with me all along. Like they were, you know, picking up dumpling from like my cooler on the corner of the street. You know, like it, it's a wrong way to come but yeah they've been tell me, great actually that that's actually a really interesting story tell me how how that started you know picking up <laughs> dumplings from the corner of the street like okay because uh, a, a lot of our a lot of our listeners they are just starting out and they want to be able to create that loyal customer and ultimately in the hospitality industry it's all about being able to have a loyal fan base that would support you so how do you think we survive covid if we don't have you know, the support that we have right now in the community. Um, yeah, like I start off on Instagram, I make a post, people start to order on DM and then it's a, and people would just come and pick up and like, I just stand in front of this building down in downtown Victoria with a cooler and people would just come in and tell when me was to this? order. And this was a year and a half ago, just before COVID, maybe like six months before COVID start, we start that. And it was just a part-time thing because I was still managing the restaurant full-time. This dumpling thing is just like something that me and my mom come up with to keep her busy with her Alzheimer's, just to keep, you know, her, her hand function and her brain going. So, you know, just to keep her at the level that she needed to be with Alzheimer's. So you actually created the dumpling business. Main part of that comes from a really good reason is to be able to do something for your mom. Yeah, just to do something like as an Asian only child, mm. there's not like my mom should want to do all she ever wanted to do and what keep her happy is me. So we were just try to find something that we can do together, something that bring back a good memory as a her good memory, you know, that what the doctor like just spend time with her, do things that's like create good memory or bring back good memory like they seem to respond really well with that with Alzheimer and as a family growing up we always you know sit around the big dinner table with my grandma with a bowl of dumpling filling and you know they just make us all roll this dumpling and we eat a whole bunch of dumpling on a family night kind of idea so that's how the dumpling drop gets that we were just rolling so much dumpling and we couldn't eat them all so I start to give it to my friend. They suggest we should start selling them. And yeah, that's how Dumpling Drop become a thing. Wow. It's such a, like, this is such a real authentic story that that's why you guys have such loyal customers and, and community because like what you just shared with me, like I, it touched, it, 
it's hitting a chord too you know like it's something that i i want to support you i want some dumplings from you now <laughs> it's, it, it's a dark story but at least something good come out of it you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no totally and i think that's why you're able to have that 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 drive to continue to do this despite how difficult it is yeah for sure and um and at this point i'm doing it full time to take care of my family because you know, my mom also worked in the restaurant business. And, um, she was a server all her life in the Thai restaurant. And let's be real. We don't really have like the, what do you call it, The retirement fund, like most other job is. So like for me, this is taking care of her. So thank you. Yeah, thank for you. sure. You, Tarn. It's, <laughs> wow. I, I wasn't expecting this midday, this, this, this song story, but you know what? It's, it's good. It's good. It's good that you guys are like doing so great. I, I love that. And I know we, we took a really long, um, detour from our initial question, which was like when you first started in the corner, um, just giving out dumplings. That's how you started. You created an Instagram page and you're like, Hey, come find me. And people started coming by. And, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's Something new and exciting for Victoria too, you know, no one really did that. And uh, we, we start to do pop up and that was like another thing that Victoria didn't really have before. You know, I, um, we start pop up in a fan tan alley, which is the oldest alley in Canada. So like it's really narrow and it's hidden. So it's like, it's like, it's kind of a cool thing. Like come and fire, you can smell it, you can hear people, you can see the lie up and that have become a thing. It's become pretty big. Um, before the COVID, yeah, last summer. Wow. How long did you run the pop-up for? Uh, we did it for just the summer, like uh, summer before the COVID. And then that's done. Like, I think we only got, yeah, we only got permit for 14 days, like 14 different events. And we, we took on to that. Uh, we did 13 of that. And then we saved one of our permit to do um, Brewery and the Beast, which is like my favorite food festival. Um, it was such an honor to be invited to that after like little pop up, you know. So to me, it was like, wow, this is very great. So wow, you're able to okay. So let, let's let's go back go back down to the timeline. So you're like, hey, you know what? Let's do this part time. I'm working in a, uh, at a restaurant space, and you created something specifically, honestly, just for your mom. And it yeah. took off on Instagram. You guys are like, hey, there's momentum. We're selling a few bags here and there. Let's do a pop up, right? You did 13 <laughs> events. And yeah, we have a pop up startup, and then. Yeah, it's a cat to go off from there. Next thing you know, everyone's just like, do you want to come do pop up here? You want to come do pop up there? Uh, um, we have 45 different pop up books for the for last summer. Like like in January, we already have our whole, our whole summer plan. We have all the pop up book. We have all the food festival book up, beer fest. We have it all book up and COVID hit. So we couldn't do anything. So I'm like, let's go back to basic. Let's go back to what we know best, which is frozen dumpling delivery. We're going from 25 delivery a week to 250 delivery a week during the peak of COVID. Well, sorry, sorry. Let's go back a little bit. From 20 deliveries to 250 bags a week. No, no, 250 different delivery. It was an average about 600 back a week to delivery alone. Holy. Wow. We were having like six people doing an eight hour shift to out delivery. <laughs> was... so, so, but we have to like that. That's the thing about COVID. You have to pivot to what's next. What's the next restriction and what we could do, you know, so we can't do pop up anymore. So let's go back to doing what we know how to do. and. What people need right now is just cooking at home, cooking frozen dumpling with the family. Um, you know, we did like soup kit in the winter, like we did, you know, like dumpling soup kit so people can, you know, have like a nice soup dinner with their family in the winter time. So you just, that's the thing about COVID, it makes you, you think, I think you work harder to come up with something that will work for that restriction, that time. Oh my God, I'm falling in love with you, Tarn. You are so great as a entrepreneur because you embody so much of the 
the attitude that is needed to succeed in this field. And because, and I want to share a little bit with you because I, I get in touch with a lot of entrepreneurs and restaurateurs and a lot of them, they, they feel defeated and they're always angry about restrictions. They're angry about, Hey, you know, why are we getting shut down? Why is this? Why that? But for you, you are like the 5% of the people out there who's like, Hey, the game has, the rules of the game have shifted and has changed. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Not that bad. Like I feel for everyone and, and everything going on. I, I feel it. I totally understand where the anger coming from with like, we can sit there, be angry, or we can do something about it. Exactly. That's exactly my point. It's like, you understand that the rules of the game have changed and you're like, Hey, you know what? There's no point of sitting on our butts. Let's go out and actually adapt to the rules and let's pivot on what we do best. And you brought it back to the core and you understand what your customers are wanting. So you went from like 20 bags to 600 bags. It is insane. And I'm super like, I applaud you for being able to take so so quick and just keep adopting now on that note i think a lot of people's questions would be like hey did you just post on instagram is that the only way yeah it was the only way like we were posting on instagram and uh, people were order to instagram and it was getting a little crazy so we started a little um where space website Oh. We start first rate website so people can actually now order online so it's just more organized and I like, don't miss anyone order and thing like that so it was like an online store that like we can do that and yeah that's that's how it got started but like most of it is just Instagram and Instagram post and you just gotta be on it and my thing about that too and I think what why I think that we do so good and I don't know if it's right but like that's just my thought is that the fact that I don't discriminate. Like if people happy to post a picture of their dumpling and it doesn't look the greatest, but if they're proud enough and they're happy to share it with me, I'm gonna post it. I want them to feel like they did something because they did. To me, I'm happy and they're happy. So I'm gonna post it. You know, I'm not the most, dumpling drop is not the most curated. Like I don't care if the picture is not perfect. I care about what make people happy with our food. That's why you have loyal fans. That's why you have that community. I love that. And, and the, and the post that you guys make is always so heartfelt. You guys are always so authentic and it's something that is really inspiring. So, you know, a consistent posting on Instagram. Now you have a following you like people love your good food. And of course you need to make sure that you have great dumplings. I'm not saying like anyone that sells dumplings can be, a, uh, be as successful as you are, but now that, Hey, you know what, you figured it out. You're selling like 600 bags uh, a week. Then you're like, you know what? I need my own store. Yeah, I gotta put, uh, we were gonna do the food truck, you know, like the food truck was our next next best thing. Uh, but then COVID hit, I lost money on the food truck situation. And and City of Victoria make it really, really hard to, to run a food truck. Like you have to get permit. It's really hard to find space to park. Um, it's rainy here most of the time. So like we can only run it for, you know, so we had to scratch again, like with COVID, thing changed immediately. So you have to just like, okay, what can we do next? So I approached a guy that was like gonna let me use this parking space. And he like, oh no, like you can't use the parking space. This restaurant next door is like really up against you and he doesn't want it. But I have the restaurant space that you can have, you know? Um, and I went and looked at it. It's in an old part of Victoria Chinatown where I live for, you know, most of my life here is I live in Chinatown. So obviously we took it immediately and we opened, we took the key and we just started that day. We just did everything we could. Um, we know that it wasn't going to be permanent. Uh, they told us obviously that like that building going to be knocked down in the next few years. We probably have a couple of years, but for us, it had to pass by. Like if during COVID, we'll take what we can, we'll make it work while we can. And whatever next is something we're just gonna have to plan and work on that. Why we do this. If there was one thing, your secret, let's say that someone can actually be able to learn from you on the ability to create a community. What is that one thing that you think 
is your secret sauce? Authentic to being yourself, like being exactly, you know, like, and cook the food that you love, just cook the food that you like, and stand behind. Being authentic, wow. It's, it's always yeah. a, a very, very big common theme that I, I realize, especially, you know, being in touch with so many different restaurant owners. Um, it's that the people that are authentic truly be able to let their passion flow through. Right. And people can yeah. see right through that and your customers can see right through that. Uh, and if you're not real, then like people won't support that. So really, really good stuff. And I know for a fact that, you know, the community, the, the community doesn't just stop at your customers, but more importantly, it bleeds through to how you treat your employees as well. Tell me uh, about that. I have such a good team. It's hard not to, you know, like they're all my friends. We work together. Like some of us work together at a whole Thai restaurant. Uh, you know, some of us just, yeah, like they're all friends. They're all good friends of mine. And, and that was exactly what I said. Well, that was like one of my number one goal to start a business. Like I want to run a business that I can be like proud about. Like that, you know, like that we treat each other well, you know. Cause I feel like if you treat them well, they work so hard for you. And to be honest, I have such a good team, like amazing, amazing team. We make sure to pay them well. And my main thing is that to make sure they all get benefit and like the trees, you know, we all have family, like restaurant business right now, which is like, I work in the restaurant business for 20 years and had to fight teeth and nail for like my benefit, which I only got for six months at one of the job, like out of 20 years, I got my benefit for six months. The rest, the other people did not give to you. And I think a lot of people leave because of that, you know? Um, and I think the restaurant owner doesn't really realize that, that to like, it is hard on your body to work in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. So when you give them a little tool to, you know, help them taking care of them. Cause right now at 40, like my, body is just like in so much pain all the time i feel like if i take care of myself in that 20 year of running around i wouldn't feel like this it, it, it's pretty unheard of that in the restaurant industry especially like a mom and pop shop to give benefits and and to have that kind of care for their staff because ultimately, and it's truly about the culture that you you breathe, and and a lot of people don't realize that the culture is not something that they they write on a piece of paper. It's really how you live and how you treat not just your customers, your vendors, your suppliers, and also your staff. And when you can embody this type of of, of values amongst every everything that you touch, it that's really the essence of how you can create such a great culture. Yeah, I. I wouldn't run the restaurant any other way. Like, I love my staff. They're like family. I am so inspired talking to you because it's like, I am, I'm learning from you. I don't think that I run my businesses like you do. Uh, and, and as much as I, I, I pride myself to, to care about my staff and to really want to build something with them. Like I, I don't have that commitment like you do so it's very humbling being able to 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 learn from you so thank you thank you so much for sharing this i i you know what you are proving to be doing a much better job in being able to actually showcase your culture and the community that you're able to build because you are like viral online uh, the post that you guys make is just amazing like the, the way that i found you is through the msg post that went viral right. Yeah, that um, yeah, we that was a touchy subject, obviously. Um, tell us, really actually, you know what? Tell us the story about that one, that 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 post, and, and how it got viral. That's the story behind that. I, I was nervous about it, obviously. I mean, like, you know, we we in Canada, you know, like what they believe in and whatnot. But I work in an Asian restaurant for, like I say, twenty years, and you know. Racist is real. I deal with on a daily, especially in a restaurant. And when you work in an Asian restaurant, you get them. You get them every day in certain shape or form, you know, just a little remark here and there. But MSG was like something that come up almost on a daily, you know. And um, I grew up think the MSG was bad personally. I was not allowed to eat instant noodle growing up because my grandma think it was food MSG and it's bad for you. And, you know, working in the restaurant business for so long and with more study coming out, you know, all the time, like David Chang, like 
you know, some people put a lot of money and study into this. Why the hell do we still think it's bad? I mean, like, so I thought that with all this anti-Asian, Asian racism that coming out, I think it was like, it's a good time to come out with it. Just because this is, people are listening right now. People are open their heart and their mind to the to this Asian anti-Asian thing. And I, I think it's a, it's a big can of worms that we should open. It's a pumpkin talk about really i mean people been trying to talk about it but i don't know so it's, it's a it's a nerve-wracking situation we, oh, we put- to- totally it's super ballsy for you to you know during the heat of this whole discussion about and just to fill our listeners in um during this whole the peak of the whole asian hate uh anti-asian uh, whole movement um you've decided to come out and just write a post about how MSG relates to racism and was able to bring it back to food and about how this uh, phenomenon is already happening throughout the years without us knowing. Uh, and I thought that was brilliant because for you, you are not coming out to to claim this just because you want to get the attention, but rather you come from a very, very, uh, it, this means a lot to you and it comes across through the post. It was scary for us. You know, like, what, what, what did we get ourselves into? But I believe it was a good time, and I believe the people are open mm. and more willing to learn. So I love uh, that it, it proved to, to be super well received. Went viral. Uh, all these yeah. attention. Thank you so much for this opportunity to talk about something I really care about. So I really, really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's say, for example, people who are in Vancouver, they want yeah. to support you. How? How can they support you, Karen? Tell me. We are working on it. We are definitely working on it. But um, to be honest, when people from Vancouver talk to me, I'm just like, have you heard of my friend Dickie? <laughs> have you heard of Dickie Dumps? No, I haven't. Yeah, it's my friend. He's doing the same thing. He's a good guy. Let's support him. No, 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 no. We're supporting you. Tell us how we can support you. Tart. We will have something. Uh, hopefully, I talked to, to 33 Ager, um to do some pop-up there eventually. When it's safe to do so, we would love to come there. And I would love to see you there, obviously. Nice. Um, Tell us about your handle. What, what's your handle? What's your, you know what, what is your shop's name? I don't even know if I made a proper introduction of your shop and your uh, restaurant. Yeah. Oh, just dumpling drop. Um, we are in Victoria, BC. Um, we are local small shop in the old Chinatown. We have five, five, six Pandora Avenue and yeah. Dumpling drop.ca. Check us out. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much Tarn for, for being on this. <laughs> really appreciate it. And, yeah, I hope to be chatting with you again soon, hopefully. Very, very soon. You take care of yourself, and I'm definitely going to order some dumplings. I'm already like, I'm, I'm already on your site. I'm like, you know what? Time to order. And go, guys. Make sure you guys give Tarn a follow. Her story is amazing. She's authentic. She's a real deal. Make sure you guys go and support her. Thank you, Wilson. I appreciate it.